Hi y'all, it's been a while. Um, I haven't been able to post videos. I have had a string of minor health issues kind of roll into some bigger health issues that have resulted in me having to go in and out of the ER and find a bunch of specialists and then organize a bunch of those appointments to specialists and yeah life life happened a lot so thank you for sticking around and here is my new video uh, it is a traditional time-lapse video which this channel is known for and mostly consists of. The subject of my painting ended up being oddly apropos given my health and how exactly stuff went down. It talks about the ADA and how that's supposed to help with ableism and how you need to enable somebody to help themselves and not just do everything for them and how you need to listen to them advocating for themselves and not literally put up walls in the way or stairs in the way of somebody that needs a chair. Um, Yeah, I, I guess I'll talk a bit about that over over the video. Let's let's go. <laughs> the ADA, otherwise known as the Americans with Disabilities Act, is a law signed by President Bush in front of about 3,000 people on July 26, 1990. It made it illegal to discriminate against people with disabilities. The law is around 29 years old now. Despite this, I personally still witness it being broken on a regular, almost daily basis. It has personally affected me as well. I have several different diagnoses, all of which can be disabling, and sometimes I need to use a wheelchair to get around safely due to my chronic fatigue. A fine example of this is how some people act like I was faking needing to use my chair when I stand up to get out of it. No, I'm not faking it, nor have I magically been cured. Not all people are bound to their wheelchairs. There's several hundred thousand different reasons why somebody might medically need one. Another prime example I have personally encountered is when one area of my health and my diagnoses is used to deny care to another area. For instance, the fact that I need to use a wheelchair part-time, and even though I can transfer myself in and out of it, I was denied access to some mental health services I really needed due to a bad reaction to a medication to handle physical pain that was causing psychological distress. Another example is where my ability to advocate for what I needed was ignored and I was forced to be further medically evaluated in a, oh, you have to reach this level or we won't sign this paperwork for this service that has been proven to help you in the past because, well, the reason they gave me was because I cognitively didn't know better for myself. Somebody can have cognitive processing issues and PTSD and know what has worked best for them in the past and often advocate that for themselves. That is not directly impacted, even though I have cognitive processing issues. Yet another example, I have gone into doctor's spaces or places that claim that they are accessible, and I show up 
with my chair because I'm having a bad pain day. And lo and behold, the first thing I encounter is stairs and often no signage for where a wheelchair accessible ramp or entrance is. Or I encounter the ramp and it is so narrow I cannot fit on it or properly turn or it is so steep I cannot get myself up and down it or there is no room for the door to open at the top and for me to fit through with my chair. Oh, another example. I can get down the ramp, I can get into the door, but then the metal detector that is in front of the door is too narrow for me to fit through. I can think of several hundred more examples, but that kind of defeats the purpose of this video. The purpose of this video is to celebrate the fact that the ADA does exist, that there is a legal process I can go through every single time one of these things happens, and I try to do it, not just to complain about the situation and the fact that I've encountered it, but to help improve access for other people who have to come in after me. Because the fact of the matter is, I am not just helping other disabled people when I try to politely share these complaints and issues when they come up with grievances for people. The fact of the matter is, a building with an obvious ramp that isn't down a sketchy alleyway that is brightly painted with a mural makes a building more accessible for somebody who is pushing a stroller or making a delivery, not just for somebody using a wheelchair. More accessibility that can be added to a building also increases the likelihood that a disabled person can successfully work in that environment, reducing their dependence on others both emotionally physically and financially as a result allowing us to reach our full potential and be an asset to society versus what is often perceived as a burden whether from an outside or internalized per three things i'd like us all to keep in mind odds are either you or somebody you know and love will become permanently or temporarily disabled for a period of six months or less at some point in your lifetime. The odds of how much that disability will impact somebody from continuing with their lives with or without adaptation and of what kind is heavily dependent on how accessible their immediate environment is, both physically and mentally. Number three, do your best to make every situation you encounter as accessible as possible and continuously look for and ask for ways to improve it from the people who need the accessibility.